Welcome to the Homeownership Podcast presented by Momentum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning properties. Now here's your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 135, What to Expect at a Home Inspection. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. This week, I want to talk to you about what to expect at a home inspection. This will be a helpful episode for both buyers and sellers alike. Oftentimes, people really get freaked out by the word home inspection. Sellers especially, they wonder, what's going to go on? What if the person decides they don't want my home? How do I deal with it? What are they going to look at? Should I be there? Should I change things ahead of time? How should I best manage the home inspection? Home inspection is an intimidating time to most buyers and sellers alike. The reality is it should not be. It is simply a time to look the home over thoroughly. So first off, for sellers, getting prepared for a home inspection. Well, maybe you repair things that you know are broken, possibly. Maybe you take care of those items. But one thing you don't want to do is go out of your way to hide items. Hiding things is just going to make it look much worse than having them just the way they are. If you're going to properly fix them through licensed contractors, then that's okay. Of course, it's a good idea, but you probably should have properly disclosed them considering it is illegal, not just immoral, not just unethical, but illegal to have not properly disclosed known material defects in the state of Massachusetts. That said, if you are going to get things repaired, make sure they do it right because the home inspector knows, they know the different guidelines, the different codes, and they're going to notice. They're also going to notice the new work. People get really freaked out when they go to a home inspection, and between the time they looked at the home and the time that they get there, things are different. This is almost like basically admitting I am a liar as a seller because, again, known material defects state, not having said anything about these material defects and changing them, without anyone having asked you to, can be really awkward as far as the way a buyer feels about it. Of course, if you get something fixed correctly through a licensed contractor, they're going to be more happy than upset in the idea that now that item is no longer defunct. But what they think about is, if you're willing to lie about this, what else is hidden? This is the thing that we always worry about when it comes to home inspection. The best thing we can do as a seller, or really as a homeowner, is to properly take care of the home. Address items as they come up. Take care of things being proactive, not reactive. Making sure whether it be to tighten, to grease, to make the adjustments to properly maintain items is going to avoid us a giant pitfall of a home inspection that doesn't go as planned. I would also recommend, as a homeowner, making sure to have regular inspections of your own house, not just in the idea of a home inspector, but making sure to have the heating system and air conditioning system serviced on the regular, making sure to change the filters, making sure to have a pest inspector out now and again, or to be on a regular treatment program, making sure to constantly be cleaning the gutters and paying attention to the different things that need attention. Maybe it's peeling and chipping paint that could eventually become rotten decay, or it could be simple stuff like a loose screen door that eventually falls off. The best thing we can do to prevent a bad home inspection as a seller is be a good homeowner. Make sure we pay attention to things. Owning a home is a responsibility. It's not just something like changing our underwear where we simply just press the button and go to the next one. Just like Anything else, it's going to take work, it's going to take effort, it's going to take money and energy. Owning a home is not a cheap prospect. It's not needing to be massively expensive, but being a negligent homeowner will lead to massively expensive repair bills when something that was a simple fix becomes a big problem. So now let's talk a little bit about the home inspection. During a home inspection, the inspector rates different elements of the home. It's not just simply a pass-fail. Oftentimes I hear people say, what if my house fails the home inspection? Well, that's not exactly a correct way of saying it. Of course, there's homes that have a lot more problems than others, but a home does not fail a home inspection. Items do. 
Maybe the hot water heater doesn't make the water hot enough. That gets a poor rating. Maybe the flooring has holes in it. That could get a poor rating. Maybe the roof has leaks. That could get a poor rating. But what we don't see is just a pass-fail scenario where, geez, because this house is, has some problems, it's failed. It needs to come down. Of course, there are certain ones that do get condemned, but that usually doesn't take home inspection to see this. This is usually when we find out these types of things. We usually know that right up front. But during the home inspection, the home inspector looks at the house high and low. A really good home inspector is going to educate you on what can be done preventative maintenance wise, what can be done that's a big deal, what can be done that's a little deal, and what you should really think about as a buyer. They're going to look at things like the roof quality. They're going to look at the siding. They're going to look at the railings and the handrails and the decking. They're going to take a look at the foundation. Is the land locally graded correctly? Are the gutters full? Are the downspouts connected? Are there any outbuildings and what's the condition of those? Are there any broken windows? Then they're going to go inside. They're going to look at things such as the heating system. Is the filter changed? When's the last time it was serviced? Around what year was it installed? Different things that are going to give them key indicators. They're going to check the basement. They're going to look for signs and indicators of water. See if there's been any water infiltration to the home. If there's a sump pump, they might check the operation on that. They're going to check everything high and low. They're going to look through. And one of the other things they're going to do is a little bit of probing. They're going to see, is there any insect damage on any of the carrying beams of the house underneath when they look up from the foundation? Do they see anything? If the crawl space is large enough, if there is a crawl space and there isn't a basement, depending on the inspection company, they're going to have minimum limits of what size crawl space they go into. They go into the crawl space, they're going to look again. Does it have a moisture barrier, which is a barrier that protects houses with crawl spaces from condensation coming up through the floor? Is it properly vented? All the different things that they deem very important when it comes to owning your home, usually with a high attention to detail on moisture issues. Moisture issues can cause a lot of different issues. At first, it starts off as moisture but then it ends up in a whole bunch of different things that we don't like to see, which is mold, rotten decay, insects, and other things that moist wood or moisture in the home will bring in. Other things they check in the home would be the floor surfaces. They want to see that all the floor surfaces are solid. They're going to look over the wallboard, make sure that there's no irregular holes or anything that seems wrong. Gonna check and make sure the walls all look straight. They're not structural engineers, but they're going to point out the idea of maybe we should have a structural engineer into the home. Typically, they're going to plug into every single outlet, flip all the switches, check out, make sure to open up the electrical panel, make sure that there's no things called double taps, which is where you're using one breaker for more than one circuit. Different things that the electrical should know. They're also going to look on the outside. Is there a drip loop and is any water or moisture getting in the back side of the panel? Maybe they might identify that you don't even have breakers and that you have fuses, but they're going to look and they're going to check that electrical and make sure you're up to date. Oftentimes, if the appliances are included, they're going to check, make sure that the stove or oven is running. Sometimes they'll check the microwave. Other times they'll run the dishwasher. It really depends on the inspector and what the inspection you paid for covers, but most of them will check the appliances if they're included within the sale. Other things they're going to do, flush the toilets. They're going to rock them back and forth, see. They'll open the cabinet doors below sinks, check, make sure that there's no water leaking. They're going to turn on the water and check the temperature on it. They're going to turn the thermostats on both hot and cold, using a temperature gun to make sure that the heating system is coming up to temperature as well as the cooling system is pulling the temperature down to the appropriate level. During the whole entire time of this, what they're going to do is they're going to be writing notes, formulating a report for after the fact where they're going to give you a multi-page report, typically somewhere between, say, 30 and about 70 pages. It's going to include pictures, diagrams, it's going to include descriptions, ratings, and it's going to tell you everything you need to know about that home inspection that went on that day. And it's going to give you those ratings so you know which ones you should and should not be concerned with. Now, sometimes a buyer can and other times a buyer cannot attend the home inspection based on their own personal timelines. 
Well, I'd advise you, usually it's best to attend it just because it's easier to hear the information on the ground. Also, they do some helpful things like show you where the water turn off is and different things like that. You got to remember that not always can it happen. While attending a home inspection, the inspector will give you that helpful information about owning the home. They'll also explain the important things like the water main turn on and where it's located, but not always is that optimal to our schedules. Not always can we make it to that home inspection, so that's okay. And then as a seller, a seller, you really need to just get out of the way. I advise you that you should not be at home inspection. It's the time for the buyers to look at the home. It can be a little traumatizing as well, standing there for hours, wondering what the inspector is saying, wondering what's going on, when in reality, you have no control of the situation. The inspection's happening, whether you're there or not, and it's gonna come out with the same results. So you're better off to just wait to see what is it that the buyer finds and what is it that the buyer requests? Best thing you can do during that day is just take some time and just maybe go out, go out for lunch, go out with the family, go maybe look at houses if you're moving. Do something productive that's going to take your mind off of it and not just sit there and wonder what's wrong. Thinking about it is not going to change the end result of what goes on with the home inspection. The thing to think about with home inspections really is, again, it's a time for the buyers to truly look at the house. It's a time for them to figure out what's wrong. Now, depending on the contract and what you chose, home inspections may be a time for negotiation or they may be a time to move forward. The Massachusetts Association of Realtors standard contract to purchase form in there says that the home inspection must be satisfactory to the buyer which that's kind of a risky clause. So if you are a seller, you better off to see the inspection contingency that says the inspection is dependent on a certain dollar volume. So that means instead of saying that it's the satisfactory result, it's saying that if the home inspection, and I'll just make up a number, doesn't unveil $1,000 worth of problems, I'm not going to negotiate about them. I'm going to move on. It's called an inspection subject to fixed costs. This is the one that we like to see as a seller over the standard because the standard one, well, yes, we should accept it. Sometimes it needs to be, but oftentimes we might as well ask if it's available to put a subject to specific costs one together because it gives us just a little more assurance that a loose light switch cover or something simple isn't going to cause us problems. I know we're in a crazy market. The year 2021 here, people are waiving inspections and doing all sorts of stuff like that. But the truth is, as a seller, a home inspection also helps you in the future avoid lawsuits because when a person gets into a house that they've probably inspected they really take some of the onus on themselves, whereas when they don't properly inspect it, then later on they run into issues. Oftentimes, even though it may not be something that you knew about and you did properly disclose everything, they may feel hurt by the idea that they get a home that has trouble right away, and they may try to come back at you with litigation. I always enjoy giving a person the right to properly look at a home. That way, the entire transaction goes over properly because the home inspection just gives them that little bit more surety to buy in the home and know what they're buying. Buying, selling, and owning a home is a big responsibility. If you're looking for somebody that can help you properly buy, sell, and own homes, reach out to us over here at Movementum Realty. We'd be happy to schedule you an appointment with one of our Move Mentors. Move mentors are what we call our agents. We call them that because we believe they're a mentor and a guide in the process of buying, selling, and owning homes. Not only are they salespeople, but they're also that guide and mentor to make sure you get it right, to make sure you maximize the value off of your biggest investment in life, and to make sure the process goes as smooth as possible. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe. Also tell your friends and family about it. Make sure they subscribe as well. Check out our free weekly newsletter, blog, podcast as well as facebook group where we give out great free information about buying selling and owning homes thanks again and have a great day